Oh, there you are. Morning. <laughs> I, I didn't have the sound switched on there. Good morning. It's Thursday, the 24th of August, 2017. Yes, gang, it's another United Kingdom tour coming to you live from the Mirable Studio in Royal Berkshire. Looks like it's going to be a nice day again outside there. Uh, I'm popping into London uh, this morning around about 11 o'clock, so I can't stay for hours and hours going to be a quick show today of about half an hour, to be honest. OK, uh, so I've got to pop into London uh, with my friend later on to collect some tablets from uh, from one of the hospitals down there. Yesterday on the way to work was quite nice. For the first time, I met a friend accidentally. We hadn't arranged to meet or anything. Uh, Merlin, who you've often seen pop up on the... Um, uh, on the chat thing here, Merlin, I was I wasn't even out somewhere. I was driving to work, and uh, I was stuck as usual at the traffic lights at Euston Station, going along the Euston Road, uh, just on the left there. And uh, I looked over, and I thought, I, I know that bloke cl crossing the road in, in a in a in a grey suit, and it was Merlin. Uh, who I've known for, I don't know, about eight, eight, nine years. Never actually met him. I, someone I know from radio and that sort of thing, you see, um, from uh, internet radio. And he's, he's very, very talented. And I met him last night and he was literally crossing the road. I said, Merlin, Merlin. And he looked around. He said, oh, hello. And he came across the car window. You know, I think all the other people in the cars quickly done their windows up because they thought he was one of those rather annoying front window cleaners. Actually, come to think of it, I haven't seen any of those for ages and ages. Maybe they've cracked down on those. Oh, it was used to be so annoying. You'd stop at traffic lights, always at busy junctions in London. And then some bloke or, or girls, I've seen girls do it as well, scruffy dressed people with filthy, dirty hands, clamber all over your front window screen, start washing it and demanding money, dear. Even when you've said no. And uh, no, I don't want it. Oh, come on, mate. No, I don't want it. Well, I'll just do a free one. Leave it alone. Go away. <clears throat> I don't need my windows clean. Thank you very much. I've got the lovely Mark to clean my windows. If I want anything cleaned, I'll get him to jump up a ladder and do them for me. Thank you very much. He's very good at cleaning windows, Mark. Um, so that was it, really. You know, I just saw, saw Merlin on the way to work because I was really, really pleased about that. Apparently, him and his few friends are um, uh, down for a, for a few because they live. They don't live down there. I think they live up in uh, Cambridgeshire somewhere. I can't remember where now. Um, so that's good. Uh, you may have seen a quiz was good last night. Seven teams, which became five. Because I think there were two thick teams last night. They couldn't cope with the pressure. The pressure was too much for them, wasn't it? <laughs> so we lost two teams last night. But that often happens. People start playing and they think, oh, I can't do this. And then they go. I don't think it's a particularly hard quiz. Out of 50 questions, I think the highest score we got last night was 37. So I don't think it's too difficult. If it was too difficult, people would be getting like 20 right, wouldn't they? So I think that was fair enough last night. Um, nice people in there last night. Lovely people. It's nice to see the short planks who are regulars. Or they were regulars at the quiz. They haven't been uh, for some time now en masse. Last night they were en masse and they came second, I think, winning the bottle of wine. And uh, it was lovely, lovely to see them. In, in particular, I take a take a quite a liking to T, who, who often has her hair pink. She's wonderful, T. She really is. While I was um, on the way to work last night, I did do a FaceTime Live mobile, which you may or may not have seen uh, in the car. So, you know, phone on there, recording while I'm driving along. Now, I sent it privately to a policeman friend of mine once I'd got to work. I said, could you have a little look at this and tell me what's the legalities of that? And he quickly came back to me. He said, I'd take it down, Chris. You could be accused of not paying full attention to the road rather than the broadcast. He said, I wouldn't do them. Thank you very much. So I took it straight off and won't be doing any more of those unless I'm sitting in the passenger seat. I had a feeling it was a little bit like this. Certainly with, uh, you remember, we, we tried to get off the Kingdom karaoke where I get people to come into the car and sing songs. The only problem is that, OK, which which appears, uh, according to my policeman friend, to it would be a problem. So, um no more lives in the car or anything like that. I could do recording in the car, you know, if I'm the passenger. 
that that would be okay. But if you're driving, and I do, you know, that's a fair point. He said, uh, no, I wouldn't do it if I were you. Okay, so we won't won't be doing that anymore. No more mobiles unless I'm the passenger. Perhaps you could come and drive me around. I'd quite like the idea of having a chauffeur. You know, you'd have to open the car for me as the door for me as well. I want to look important. And when I pull up outside Waitrose, you know, pull up right to the front door on the double yellow lines, get out the car, open the door for me, and I come out. What do you reckon? Is that a job for you? <laughs> just a suggestion, just a suggestion. We're talking to some of the um young people in there last night, because we often have teams of young people. Uh, doing uh, doing the quiz at the King's Head Theatre Bar. That's every Wednesday, 8 o'clock, 8.30, 8.30. And um, they were reading a magazine. I spotted one of them reading, I think it's City Life. Uh, it's, it's, it's an Islington, and, and uh, I think it's an Islington magazine. I think it's called City Life or Islington Life, something like that. Anyway, I said, I said, oh, you must be looking at one of the flats to buy at the back. He said, oh, has it got property in it? I said, yeah, go to the back pages. And he went to the back pages. I mean, these these the property in Islington, you know, like a studio flat, seven hundred and fifty thousand pounds. I mean, it's just ridiculous, just ridiculous. You you if you ever get a copy, if you or if you go on right, is it right move or something like that? Type in Islington, and then put starting. I don't know, up to seven hundred and fifty thousand. You you barely find a thing on there. Mad prices in Islington. And I'm not being funny. It's a bit of a dive, Islington. Okay, you've got all the shops, you've got all the bars, you've got all the reason, lots of posh people living there, but the pollution and the cars and the scum that walk around there at night, dear. Oh, my God. Come to the country. Bracknell is the place to be. It absolutely is. So I chatted away to the young ones about that. I said, so I said, well, if you can't afford to buy one, you could always rent somewhere. About 1500 a week. <laughs> you see, most young people, they have to share houses. They can't afford a one-bedroomed flat on their own or anything like that. It's very, very sad. I don't know where it's going to go. <clears throat> you know, there must come a point where people just can't afford to pay these prices. There has to come a point, doesn't there? Even if you've got the investors uh, buying the properties and renting them out, there has to be a limit, surely, to what that rent can go to. It just gets higher and higher and higher. Absolute madness, madness. And then, of course, you know, they all go to university, so they owe upwards of £50,000 in tuition fees once they leave there. And I just, I just think that's a bit of a waste of time. You know how I feel about university. OK, if you're intelligent and you want to learn more, then please go. If you're not intelligent or you just want to go for the nightlife, then you shouldn't be going. And when I say not intelligent, I don't mean thick as a plank. I I don't class myself as an intelligent person. I would be the wrong person to go to university, university and indeed I didn't. But we weren't pushed hard to go. We were suggested to go, but we weren't pushed hard to go. Now they're all told, oh, you must all go to university. And half of them end up in McDonald's. Nothing wrong with McDonald's if you want to work there. But they want to be, I don't know, solicitors and barristers and people like that. They're not going to be solicitors and barristers. Not everyone is clever enough to do that. And it's wrong to, to push them to university, come out of university, go and work in McDonald's and owe £60,000 to the government. And um, I found out most recently, I can't remember if I told you this or not, but you know that money they owe, £60,000, they get charged interest on that. They, um, I couldn't believe it when I heard that. They actually get charged interest on that. Uh, and it's not like the interest that you would pay on a mortgage. It's much higher than that. Now, T, I don't know if this is true or not, T is one of the um, older customers, around about my age, um, in the uh, King's Head Theatre Bar. She said they pay 6%, 6% interest on the money that they owe for going to university. Untrue, isn't it? So I do feel um, uh, quite sorry for a lot of the young ones who are like that. Came home, had my dinner, got back here around about a quarter to 12 last night, had my dinner. And um, I've been watching. I'm up to the. I'm up to the last program now. The state. Has anyone been watching the state? It's on Channel Four. 
Uh, I think it was the, it's the last one. I think the last one has been played out now. I haven't watched the last one yet. But the state, and it's about these British Muslims who go across to Syria and they join the Is uh, 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 ISIS. They join ISIS and they go fighting. And it's men and women, so brothers and I think they call themselves the Sisterhood. And it shows how they all have to be cut, 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 covered up. And if the if the women aren't covered up, they get punished. And one of the punishes... Mon, pu, pu, I can't get the words out this morning, can I? Am I going too fast? We must slow down slightly. That's better. And one of the punishments that the women get is that, like they kneel on a, on a chair and they take their shoes and socks off and whack their feet with like a uh, like a stick or a bamboo cane type thing, and they whack them and whack them and whack them, and they're all bleeding. Oh, it's terrible. Terrible. Very, very strict laws. But it shows how they get on, and, of course, uh, some are killed. And one woman, she's got a little boy who's, I think, nine years old, and he looks like he's starting to become radicalised. And the little boy, nine years old, is sent to the... Um, place where they learn to fight and and stab and cut heads off and that sort of thing. Oh, it's terrible. So if you haven't seen that, it's an excellent, excellent made programme, OK? It's called The State and it's been on Channel 4. I think it's finished now, but you should get it on that 4 uh, Overdrive or whatever it's called, 4OD, something like that, OK? So have a little look at that if you want to see that. Very, very, uh, very, very insight. So that was it. Went to bed, woke up. I got woken up this morning at five to nine by a window man. Not the window cleaner. That was done last week. You know, I, I could ask Mark round again. I would quite happily see him, you know, several times a week peering through my bedroom window while he's washed away. <laughs> oh, I'm terrible this morning. Terrible. Uh, no, this window man, the, the front door downstairs had a cat flap. So we had a glass bit at the top and a, like, a, I don't know what the material is. It's like, I think it's two bits of metal with foam in between it. And it had that at the bottom of the door. And there was a cat flap that I had put in. Well, of course, don't need the cat flap anymore. Uh, won't be getting another cat or any pet here at all. Um, so I want that little bit down there replaced by the frosted glass. Uh, double glazed frosted frosted glass so a bloke came around this morning uh, to give that a measure although he had to take the thing out to see how it was all put together so he's banging away with his hammer bang 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 so i immediately texted my neighbor uh hello dave sorry there's a bit a little bit of noise for a couple of minutes while he's doing something to my door downstairs at which point my neighbor replied he said yes i can hear it in rygate <laughs> they've gone for a day out <laughs> so i wasn't even at home i wouldn't i wouldn't like to upset my neighbors with noise you see and then come upstairs, and here I am. I've had my breakfast. Here I am chatting to you this morning. So I hope you're having a nice day. Let's say hello to the early birds this morning. Diane's first in with the messages this morning. Good morning, Diane. Uh, Gavin Matthews, good morning. Good morning, sunshine. Da 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 da. What was the advert with the sunshine? Oh, yes. It was for Kellogg's cornflakes, I think 1980s. Get out the big box, shake out the sun. Kellogg's cornflakes. I wonder if that one's on here. Shall we have a look? Just a moment. Big box shaker. Get out the big box, shake out the sun. I'm sure that was the words to that. Uh, big box, shake out the sun. Let's see. <clears throat> Will that be there? Yes, it is. 1976. God, it's even older than I thought. Let's see if this is. Get out the big box, shake out the sun. Kellogg's. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Get out the big box, shake out the sun. Kellogg's. Cornflakes. There's a whole summer of sunshine. Yeah, summer of sunshine. And to fill every giant box, Kellogg's take ten golden cobs like Ted, these and turn them into sunshine flakes for you. Get out the big box, shake out the, the sun. sun. Kellogg's. <laughs> Proper adverts, you see. Wonderful, happy adverts. I didn't know that. It takes them ten... Ten bits of corn to make a box of cornflakes. Did you know that? How do they? What do they do? Do they squash the little yellow things? You know, you got a corn on the cob. How do they make cornflakes from that? Is each one squashed and dried out? Because it doesn't taste like corn, does it? 
Now, if you eat a piece of corn on a cob, which I love, oh, I love that, don't you? Corn on a cob. You don't need any butter on it or anything, just like that. Put it in a microwave. It's ever so quick. Put it in a microwave, I don't know, three minutes, and you, bre- and you oh, oh, it's gorgeous, corn on the cob. Yes, so good morning, Gavin. Uh, good morning, Lewis. Morning, Lewis. Hope you're well this morning. I thought you were coming to my quiz last night. You didn't come, did you, lovey? You didn't come. I was mortally disappointed not to see you there. Good morning to lovely Elaine in Israel, who says, I don't mind a quickie with you. That naughty Elaine. You're very naughty. How's your little um, your little uh, thing going at the moment? Your, um, your visits to the hospital. I hope that's all going OK for you, Elaine. All right, my darling. Good morning to Ray, who said, uh, just on my tears, on my tears break, tea break, just on my tea break. Have a cup of tea for me, Ray. I could do with a second cup of tea before I leave this morning, actually. I need to go out. Uh, good morning to Rod Brown. Adam the Plumber's there. Morning, Adam. Who has lost last night. Oh, what did he lose? I think it was... I think it was two and a half pounds last night. Adam, what did you lose last night? I can't remember. He's lost at the Slimming World and won an award. I'll come to that in a moment. Good morning, Ray says, uh, did I hear you say the other morning that you got a show coming up? Yes, I'm here now. This is it. <laughs> this is it. Every morning there's a show. Near enough every morning around about 10 o'clock, OK? Uh, hello to the lovely Wesley. Wesley Sebastian, who's with us this morning. Good morning, Wesley. Uh, and I have to tell you, Wesley was one of the uh, lead characters in Priscilla, uh, Queen of the Desert, when it was on the stage in the West End. In fact, it was his voice that... I don't know if you've ever seen um, seen that down at the uh, theatre in London. Uh, the, he's, he was also the voice at the beginning that tells you, you know turn your cameras off and that sort of thing over the speakers in a camp voice. Now, I happen to know he did put that camp voice on because he's very, very butch sounding, Wes, aren't you? Very butch sounding, yes. Yes, he's done a lot of work like that. So good morning to you, Wes. Uh, Elaine says, do you drive around town? Uh, you drive you around town. Who do you think you are? The Duke of Reardon. Chris Reardon, darling. Very important person in London. As I wait for, I wave to the crowds. That's why there's so much traffic in London. Because of me, people stop to look into my car. I can't go to the supermarket from people trying to touch me up as I walk around. It's terrible. It really is terrible. Um, morning, Ray Reynolds. Jamie Clark's with us. Morning, Jaylee. Uh, the Earth says hello. He said hello a little bit too early for me this morning. I was actually awake at nine o'clock when the window man knocks, but... Um, uh, I wasn't ready to get out of bed. Do you know what I mean? I, I just like to lay there. In, I lie like that on my John Lewis mattress top at first thing in the morning. So comfortable. Don't want to get out of the bed. Gavin uh, is enjoying my serenading this morning. Thank you very much. Uh, Kevin Webster with us. Good morning, Kevin. Uh, who's late? Who's late? I'm never late, Kevin. Never, ever late. I never said there is no time for this show. You know that by now. This is an unscheduled show, dear. It appears at any time, day or night. Make sure you hit the little subscribe button or notification button to be notified when there is a show coming. Or or when there is a show on, okay? Um, Yeah, Wesley likes corn. How do they make... I must find that out, how they make cornflakes. I must make a a short note of that. How do they make make cornflakes? We must find that out. I reckon they squashed a little bits of yellow and put it in an oven of some sort. What do you reckon? Eh? I don't know. Morning to Shania on the Isle of Wight. Thank you, Adam. Lost three pounds yesterday and has received his I've lost four stone certificate. Come on, gang. That's worth a round of applause. Well done, Adam. He's now lost four stone. Uh, I have lost a poultry, a poultry, one stone... Uh, for 19 and a half pounds. What's that? So it's 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. One stone, five and a half pounds. Pathetic in comparison to Adam's four stone loss. Well done, Adam. I had a pair of shorts here the other day. I haven't got them now. Uh, but there's that much. Now, if I hold them against one side of me, there's that much extra on the side. That's how fat I was. And I need to go into a supermarket and load up a little basket with with sugar going up to 19 and a half pounds so that I can feel for myself how much weight I've lost. 
Just think how light I would be now if I was on top of you boys and girls. Well, maybe not the girls. Uh, good morning to Mark Kemper. Kempner. Good morning, Mark. Let's have a look there. Uh, Vectis says, I've lost a pound, but I found a fiver. Oh, I found three pounds the other day in the, in the, uh, in the swimming pool locker. Yes, thank you very much. My mate is always finding pounds in those lockers. At least one a week. I never find anything. The other day I'm in there, I've put my key in, turned it around, and three pounds dropped out. I'm so happy. I'm so happy. I immediately rushed out and bought... Four tubs of fat-free yoghurt. Have you ever had that? Very good on the Slimmer's World fat-free yoghurt. It's actually quite nice. I do like Slimmer's World fat-free yoghurt. Well, it's not Slimmer's World. Fat-free yoghurt. And the cheapest place to buy that, Audi, do it for 59 pence for a great big thing. Waitrose, Sainsbury's, 99 pence. Audi, 59 pence. So you buy four and you save... Oh, one pound. About 200 pounds. And I think you'll find that's correct. I'm very, very good at my math masks, math, math, mathematics, maths. Ma Did you hear that, Americans? Maths, not math, maths. I've heard English people saying it now. Oh, you need to do the math. No, maths, maths. We have an S on the end. Stop Americanizing the English language, please. Maths, maths. Yes, they do that at university, you know, maths, where you can rack up massive great money to be owed to the government and be charged 6% interest for the uh, privilege of doing so. Yes. Good morning to Titania. Good morning. Grumpy Titania. You're not grumpy, darling. T -t Tatiana. Tatiana. I'm sorry, Tatiana. Tatiana. Thank God it says T-A-T -T and not T-I-T. -T. That would be embarrassing, wouldn't it? Titiana. <laughs> Actually, that sounds better than Tatiana, doesn't it? Titiana. Perhaps you should rename yourself there, I reckon. Um, let's have a look here. Do, 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 do. Lewis wants to know who's on your calendar. What do you mean who's on the calendar? Only the greatest showman of all time, Mr. Barry Manilow. Looks like we made it at the Culpa. It's a miracle even now. I could just sit here and do a medley of Barry Manilow songs for you this morning if you want. I don't mind. I reckon I could be on stage next to Wesley doing something in um, Priscilla, Queen of the Desert. At first I was afraid. I was petrified. Kept thinking I could never live without you by my side. Isn't it funny? No one ever does that at karaoke. Lewis, can you do that one tomorrow? I'd like you to do I Will Survive at the karaoke tomorrow. There is tomorrow's challenge. Thank you very much. Wesley said I need to shift a bit from the belly fat, I'm telling you. Oh, don't worry. Uh, try. Have you ever tried Slimmer's World or something like that? I've been going for about 11 weeks now, uh, Wes. And in that time, as I say, I've lost 19 and a half pounds and I have found it easy. It's not about, don't think you've got to cut down on the amount of food you eat because you haven't. No need to ever be hungry. You need to change it for other foods and the way you cook them. No more takeaways. No more eating out of microwave boxes. OK, you need to cook from scratch and you need to cut out all the oil and butter. And there's so many different ways you can do it. It's worth it. It's only five quid a week. That's all it is. And I think there's a free joining coupon in this week's edition of Best Magazine. I don't read any of that. Do anyone want to read those magazines? Best, <coughs> OK, Vogue, Tatler. What a load of old tosh that lot is. Seeing how rich people are living and what they're doing, that sort of thing. It's just so boring. I don't read any magazine. The only time I pick up a magazine, sometimes I might have a quick look while I'm standing at the magazine rack in WH Smith and Son. Uh, what's going on in Smith's? Have you noticed what a, what a mess Smith's news agents are now? There's just stuff everywhere and it doesn't seem to make sense at all. It's all got a bit wrong in Smith's. Yes, I stand there sometimes and I look through the latest copy of Stuff or T3, which contains all new gadgets and things like that. We like gadgets. We like gadgets. 
Um, finally, oh, it happened to me. Yes, I know that one. Uh, Tati, Tatania says, Tatiana, I must get that. My Tatiana says, I've got a friend that calls me Titiana. Big titties. <laughs> have you really, darling? I used to have those a few weeks ago. They've gone. <laughs> I nearly had to go out and purchase a sports bra. I think my sister was going to purchase me one for Christmas. I'm going up to see her in a few weeks. I'm looking forward to seeing the family, I must say, in a couple of weeks. Um, what do you mean, I'll think about it? You'll do it, Lewis. About time you've done some new songs. Do you want me to select some for you? I Will Survive has to be a song that you're going to do, darling, all right? We want to hear you do I Will Survive. Thank you very much. Let's do some news stories for you this morning as well, boys and girls. Oh, Amazon. Now, if you're into technology, you may have missed this. Um, if you were thinking about getting one of those... Oh, hang on. We've got a phone call here. A phone call is flooding into the studio, which is amazing, really, because I haven't opened the phone lines yet. Good morning, Adam the Plumber. Good morning, Chris Reed, and Slimmer of the uh, Slimmer of the Month. No, I'm not Slimmer Good of the Month. Day. Let me just officially now open the phone line. Ding! There it is. Phone line and is now people. open. Don't try and call him while Adam's on there, though, because uh, you won't get through. I can only do one. At, well, I could. I could do several calls at the same time, but it becomes messy. Do you know what I mean? Yes, I can imagine. A little bit like your van. I bet your van's messy, isn't it? Adam's a plumber. He drives a little van around. Oh, dear. What's it, that? What's that yeah, clicking go going on, dear? I can hear clicking. That clicking, probably um, yep. the, the vehicle running in the background. Oh, that's bad, that clicking. Ah, not sure. It's probably my gearbox on the way out. But it is a company van, and I'm getting a new one very soon. So oh, are you? So, yeah. Okay. Van. No, I tend to keep my van fairly clean, actually, because uh, I work with mess all day, so I don't want to drive around. Drive yeah, around Adam, there. that, that clicking's bad, mate. I'm going to have to go. Um, okay. Are you on speakerphone? I am. I'll, um, oh, take I'll, it off uh, that and try it then. Okay, hang on. Right. See if that's what it is. Test, testing, testing, one, two, three. Any better? No. Any, I don't know what that no. click is. Do you want to call back? Yeah, I can hear it now, actually. Okay, I'll call back. Yeah, okay, mate. I don't know what that is. It, it, the trouble is it becomes painful to some people. I know how annoying it is listening to um, the radio. It's all right if you're having a conversation with one person. You can put up with it. But if you're listening as well, that might be a little bit of a problem there. Uh, yes, Amazon have reduced the price of their two Echo things. The Amazon Echo is reduced from £149 to £99 at the moment. So if you were thinking of getting one, then probably some of you out there are thinking of getting one of these for someone for Christmas. Get it now, because the Amazon Echo has been reduced from £149 to £99, and the Echo Dot is reduced from 49 to £44.99. So if you want to get one of those, get one now. Amazon, so reduced prices on those two Echo products. That's the thing that you talk to and it talks back and it says, play music and do this and do that. I won't have one in the house myself. I just think it's listening to me all the time. But yeah, a little bit of advice for you there. Adam, you there? I am. How's that, Chris? Perfect. That's fine. That's fine. I don't know what was That's going good. on there. Yeah, that's fine now, mate. Good, good. Morning. Yeah, um, no, I was just saying that my van is fairly clean because I drive, I drive around all day and fix messy, messy <coughs> things. So I don't really want to drive around in the van and uh, have a mess. So it is fairly, fairly when, clean. When I was eating crisps and things in the car, my mm. footwell used to fill up with stuff. I must say, you know, crisp packets and things like that. But of course, it doesn't now because yeah. I'm, I'm not eating any of all those right. things. Yeah, I have a little bag for life, and that has sort of my. My my messy bits in it, my banana skins and my um banana and my skins. Of water. There's a few of those. I had oh, I had two very thick long bananas yesterday. Oh yes, I I I like bananas when they when they're only just ripe. Now mm -hmm. underripe, they taste rank, don't they? When they're underripe. But too yeah. ripe, it makes them really sweet, and I'm not keen on those. I like them when they've just gone from green to yellow. Mm-hmm. Like a traffic light, right. isn't it? Traffic lights, darling. Traffic lights, lovely. Traffic lights, yes. Indeed, indeed, yes. Tell us about your weight well, loss now. Yes, my loss now is uh, four stone and one pound. Yes. So we're heading, careering towards a four and a half stone. Yeah. And I, I also got Slimmer of the Week last night as well. Oh, okay, so yeah, yeah. Basket of, 
basket of goodies. I've only got that once, rather disappointingly. Ah, oh, but you will get it again. Never mind, never mind. It's something, it's something to work towards. Yes, yes. Now, a couple of, a couple of uh, advice tips that I gave, uh, gave the group last night. Some of the uh, ladies were struggling. So I said what they really need is a partner to, um, to challenge each week. So I've got a, a young lady called Ashira. Who, um, who sits in front of me. And she's more or less lost the same as I have. Well, she's actually ahead of me by half a stone at the moment because um, she started a week before me. So she's ahead of me, um, always been ahead by half a stone, but she's on two weeks holiday now. You must really so hate I... her. Sorry? Do you hate her? Oh, I do. I hate her with a passion. <laughs> I'm, a- I'm actually trying... I actually text my um, my slimming world lady. This is true. I actually text my slimming world lady, Maria, 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 I just met a girl named Maria. Yes. I just texted uh, Maria because she texts me. She always texts everybody when uh, when they've had a good week, you know, and when right. they've done well. She she sends out little congratulations messages. And I said, please, could you send me a Shearer's um, address? And she said, why do you want that? I said, because I want to order pizzas and send them to her house. <laughs> Oh, don't. Do you know what I did years ago when I was a... I wasn't a kid. I was in my mm. teenage years. For a laugh, mm-hmm. we, yep. <laughs> we chose one of our friend's parents' house, mm. uh, me, and, me and my mate Dave, and we kept sending them things. Oh, dear. <laughs> this, and we'd watch <laughs> because we could see the house... From yeah. our balcony. So we go oh, on the right, balcony yeah. and lean across and watch the pizza man try and deliver five pizzas. And they <laughs> knock on the door and the door would open. You'd see, no, well, we haven't ordered any pizzas. And flowers and things like that. Isn't that a terrible thing to do? <laughs> well, the flowers course, were a nice ball. <laughs> well, there were no, there were no, um, there were no uh, smartphones then, unfortunately. But we no. could have got some good YouTube videos doing that. All right. Yeah, if YouTube and the internet had been around then. We used to keep sending him things. Not not anything mm-hmm. nasty. It wasn't like death cards or anything like that. You know, because yep. we did like them. We just thought it was a bit of a laugh. A little bit like where you go around to houses, knock on the doors and run away. Yes, that's it. Yeah. Now, yeah. the funny thing is now, people knock on my door and when I open it, they run away. Mm. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm sure they don't, Chris. I'm sure they don't. This Have is you, uh, uh, this is the only get, house that doesn't get knocked at when it's Halloween. I can't understand why. <laughs> <laughs> Too scared to knock, that's why. Too right and all. Don't knock at that house. That man will eat you. <laughs> Go away. <laughs> indeed, indeed. Yeah, see... Um... Uh, I have sent you a, a, a private picture on your mobile phone. Oh, right, OK. Um, it, it, so I'll, I'll let you have a look at that and see what you think. And <coughs> you'll be quite shocked with what I've sent you. Having a look now. <sighs> OK. I'll be honest, I can't see any difference. You can't. Not None really. Face. So I showed a millions of people watching the program at the moment. Is that much different? It's, it's a bit difficult. It doesn't kind of work on that camera, but no, I couldn't. I couldn't no, because because one's a. The reason I, I can't really see because one's a close up and one isn't. Um, yep. Well, I don't know. If you look at if you look at the face. Well, in that one, my face. Oh, okay. Let's try it like this. That one, my face is quite round. Okay. Mm-hmm. Let's let's zoom in on the other one. I can zoom in. Yep. But then I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I suppose so. It, I th- I think it's difficult when you look at yourself every day because you look at yourself every day. Oh, I, I I I love it, darling. I spend most of my time in front of a mirror looking at myself and a pair of Calvin Klein's. Well, I thought I thought uh, I thought that was the whole reason you did the show is because you can look at yourself on the monitor all the time. <laughs> no, if I was looking at myself in the monitor, I'd I'd be looking like that. I wouldn't be look. You've got to look straight at the little camera lens, otherwise it looks like yeah. you're looking at something else. Yeah. So what I look at is a tiny little mm-hmm. piece of glass directly in front of me, and I imagine mm-hmm. that you're on the other side. Well, you are on the other side, aren't you? I, I can't am. believe Hello. how many I'm people. You, you see. I can't believe how many people can get inside a webcam. To be honest. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> I well, must thank people. A couple of people have thanked. Uh, I must thank people as always, boys and girls, uh, for sharing the show on their walls. Some people share the show on their walls, so thank oh, you for that. Good. Carry on, uh, Adam. 
Yeah, so that was uh, that was basically my my reason for calling, and I've also left you a story on your um, on your uh, on your uh, Facebook uh, message as well. Oh, Got have you? Story. Okay, I should look at that then. <coughs> okay. All right. Thank you very much, Adam. That's all right. Have a good have, have a, a lovely week day and uh, keep up the slimming. Thank you. I shall. Cheerio. Bye. Adam the plumber. Oh, we've got another call coming in there. That's Good morning. Right. Who's on line two? Oh, gone. Someone was on line two calling from a mobile. You might want to try again. Call back and I'll uh, I'll take your call. All right, boys and girls. Uh, if I've just noticed Wendy joined us. I'm glad you have because look what's made it into the studio at last. OK, Wendy bought me this little pen. We did a, a charity uh, event. Um, actually, how long ago was that? Is it a couple of months now? Six weeks, eight weeks, something like that. Uh, in Woking, where we raised money for uh, various <coughs> different uh, charities. And Wendy bought me a new pen. And it's taken this long to get out of my bag and up the stairs. <laughs> it's great, isn't it? Look, a United Kingdom talk pen covered in little sparkly... Um, what are they called? Del Montes, I think they're called. So thank you very much for that, Wendy. Much appreciated. 0208 144 is my phone in number if you want to give us a call today. Okay, 0208 144 Lewis is off to work. Goodbye, Lewis. Good morning to Christina. You're a little bit late this morning, Christina. Better late than never. Better late than never, my love. Um, uh, uh, yes, um, Alexia. It's, it's called the Echo. It's called the Amazon Echo, but it is called Alexia. That's its name. So you say, Alexia. Has anyone got an Alexia who's with us this morning? My mate's got one. And you say, Alexia, play me Drykowski's Piano Concerto, number one in D-flat minor, and it would play it if it's connected, I think, to Spotify or something like that. And you can talk to it, and it talks back to you. Alexia, tell me the weather. I don't want one, really. Um... Because I just feel it. <clears throat> this thing is listening to you all the time. And you don't know who's listening, you know. I might make some very, very strange noises when I'm here on my own. But, but, you never know. You see? Do worry. Do worry. But, but, thank you. Mm. There we are. 0208 Oh, what's the time? Gosh, have I been here that long already? Uh, OK, we'll do some uh, stories here. Now, look at this in this morning's Super Soar Away Sun. A Brit, a British person who worked at Bulgarian boozy Brit hotspot Sunny Beach. I've never heard of it, have you? Sunny Beach, never heard of it. Has exposed the unbelievably wild antics he witnessed over two summers there. This bloke, John, 23, from Swansea in Wales, from Welsh Wales, worked two summer seasons as a club promoter in 2015 and 16 and described, are you ready for this, shock horror, mass nudity, public brawls and crazy drunken excess. This is in the sun this morning. Terrible, terrible what they're getting up to. He told Wales Online... <laughs> Welsh Wales online. I've seen people falling asleep inside clubs and in weird places, as well as breaking or spraining their ankles, cutting their feet with glass all the time from walking through the streets with no with no shoes on. You can also dance naked on the bar. Oh, my God. You can also dance naked on the bar. So sometimes you will get people who are naked falling off, which was quite strange, but it was part of the club I worked for. Girls and boys would be naked. They do say, as part of their slogan, the only place where you are allowed to dance naked on the bar. It's different. Oh, I don't know if you want bits hanging around all over the place while you're trying to have your drink or your dinner, would you? Can you just imagine that? You're sitting there eating a little pie of some sort and you put a chip and someone's bits drop onto your plate. Or a hair. A little curly hair drops off from their bodies. How disgusting is that? Oh, no. I d I'm sorry, I don't do hairs. Oh, I hate that, don't you? When someone's used your toilet and then you go to... And there's a hair. Oh, oh, bleh. make me feel ill. Bleh. Dear me. One minute you would be dancing and the next thing you would look up and there would be someone there naked. But party-loving Brits banking on a Bulgarian bender. They used to call me that at school, bender. <laughs> 
bender. Like you just took it as part of the school. It wasn't anything. Never. We all had. We all had um, nicknames at school, didn't we? Did you have a nickname at school? We got another phone call. Who's calling in, please? Good morning. Hello, Mr. Reardon. Good morning. And who is that, please? It's, Ke- it's Kevin. Kevin from Manchester. Um, Worthing, West Sussex. Kevin from Worthing. Good morning, Kevin Webster. How are you today, sir? Uh, hello, all right. Have you all been right, on? Thanks. Have you been on one of those these boozy, naked type holidays at all, Kevin? No. <laughs> I hope not. I'm. I don't think you're that sort of person, are you, my love? No, I don't do things like that. No, good. What's your news then? Pardon. What's your news? What do you mean? What? Well, you've rung in. Oh, sorry. <laughs> um, Hello, person on no, the other end of the phone. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, I just rang in and um, to say hello. And are you going on holiday this year at all? Um, don't know yet. Nowhere yet. Where do you usually go? Abroad? This country? What do you do? Uh, this country, I sooner go with like you know, love what you'd normally do, caravan things like that. Oh, you do caravans, do you? What 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 places have you been to? Uh, Great Yarmouth. Right, yeah, yeah. Isle of Wight. Isle right. of Wight. It's cheap, isn't it? Oh, I was I was yeah. looking at the caravan sites in uh, the Highlands because <coughs> I want to go mm. for a little holiday in Scotland. And uh, at the end of October, they were like 350 quid, which I thought was a little bit pricey. You know, out of season, I thought maybe 150 quid. 350 um, sounded a little bit expensive to me out of season, doesn't it, you? Well, yeah, it is a bit, Yes. Well, thanks for calling in, Kevin. Always lovely to hear your little voice, all right? All right, and see you then. Cheerio. Bye-bye. There we are, Kevin calling in from... uh, uh, oh, I forgot where he is now. From Sussex, isn't it? Sussex. That's a nice part of the world down there in Sussex. Going back to this story, uh, a leading international DJ festival has been cancelled after the government began a war of noise that saw ra- nightclubs raided. So terrible things going on there in Bulgaria. I'll make a note of that. I might go and see some naked bodies in Bulgaria. Do you want to go there? <laughs> Just a suggestion to you. We'll do one more story and then we'll have to wrap up, boys and girls, uh, because I've, I've got to go down into London today. Now, this is in this morning's Daily Mirror. It says, The ridiculous habit that's adding an extra £33 to your shopping bill. But you don't have to fall for it. How many times have you gone to the supermarket You know, with 100 quid in your pocket, oh, I just get 20 pounds worth of stuff. And you spend the 100 pounds. It's happened to me. I kid you not. It says we may be a nation of bargain hunkers, but when it comes to luxury packaging, Britain are hooked on looks. Britons are hooked on looks. (coughs) Brits are label snobs who can fool themselves into paying more for a product because of fancy packaging research has revealed. In an experiment, volunteers insisted perfume in a posh box smelt far superior than the one that is in a dull-looking one, even though it was exactly the same fragrance. And they were prepared to pay more than double for the scent in the glitzy packaging. 54 quid. 54 quid for perfume! God's sake, man! Compared with the £20 for the same product, dressed in a bland box. I mean, even £20 on perfume. Um, That's expensive, isn't it? I've got this lemon stuff that I spray on. It's five quid (laughs) from the hairdressers. She also, my my lovely hairdresser, she's from Nepal. She sprays it on my head and gives me a massage. And I, oh, oh, that's quite nice. My niece does uh, hairdressing as well. There's an old man that comes in. And uh, she she says he's a little bit pervy because he's got this beard. And he said, oh, could I have some of that oil rubbed into my beard, please? So she gets the beard and he's like, oh, that's nice. Oh, that's nice. And she goes, OK, there you go. Off you go now. Bye bye. <laughs> oh, bless him. 
It goes on, the study by Packaging Innovations London found that even taste buds can be tricked by luxury wrapping as testers say biscuits in plush wrappers tasted 51% better than those in budget wrapping. I, I reckon they've got a point here, actually. While the chocolate chip cookies in both packs were identical, they were prepared to pay almost seven times more for the stylish looking packet. A hefty £8.39 for a packet of biscuits. God's sake, man. Who pays that for a packet of biscuits? Eight quid. It's bad enough when you go into the BP garage. Have you been into the BP garage and bought biscuits? Where it's like £2.50 or something like that for chocolate digestives. What you can get for a pound in Audi. Actually, Audi do their own chocolate biscuits and they're ridiculously cheap. Something like 59 pence or something like that. And they're really nice, you know. It goes on. Likewise, chocolates in a lavish box were 14% more tasty than those in a low-key one. And even a T-shirt in a smart cover was deemed to be 10% better quality than the same top in cheaper wrapping. So there we are, look. And it goes on, wine is the same. Uh, it says, uh, identical biscuits, wine, chocolate seem to taste better and people even like the smell of a perfume more if they thought it came from a premium pack. So be careful when you're going around. Don't be, don't be conned by the pretty sparkly boxes. Jason Alexander goes to Waitrose Essentials. Well, I'm, you know, I'm, I've told Waitrose to get rid of these Essentials ones. Thank you, Jason. It's just bringing the wrong sort of people into the supermarket. I have written, you know, in, in strong terms to the head office at Waitrose, asking them to please, please drop their essential range. Because it's bringing the wrong sort of people in to the supermarket. Terrible. Terrible. Uh... Wayne says, I love hearing a Chris rant. There's no rant here, dear. We're just we're just carefully talking to each other. Kevin, don't worry about being shy. It's always nice. You want to talk, just call in and say hello, then I'll lead you, as I did, I hope. Did I lead you? Lead us, Heavenly Father, lead us all the world's temptatious sea. We did that one Sunday at church. Oh, yes. Don't worry about being shy, my love, OK? And there we are. Uh, Christina likes Waitrose coffee and tea. Uh, that's that's a tea I buy, actually. Waitrose gold blend tea. Lovely. Nice cup of tea. All righty, let's do today's birthdays, and then we'll have to go. I've got to get ready for my mate who will be around soon, I'm sure. Uh, oh, hang on a minute. Adam sent something, didn't he? What did he send? <clears throat> oh, look at this in the Daily Mail. Now, when was this? Oh, wow. You're going to love this. I'm tempted to save that for tomorrow. I'm tempted to save... No. Is that... Uh, what shall I do? Shall I save that for tomorrow or do it? No, I'm going to do it now. I'll do it now. Excellent news for John Lewis lovers. Look at this in this morning's Daily Mail. As sent by Adam. Thank you very much. Bed buyers, welcome to have a sleepover at John Lewis. Chain plans to let shoppers stay the night in special apartment to test out products. Now, I've got to tell you, I bought a new bed last year. Um, I look, oh, who is it that, oh, there's someone at the blooming door, can you believe it? Just a minute now, just a second. Actually, I might be able to get a camera downstairs so we can watch that because that's that's happened every day this week, isn't it? Every day I've had a delivery this week. This would be my new shorts. Just a moment and I'll go back to that story. New shorts. There we are. New shorts. Ah, oh, that's the material I wanted. Lovely. There we are. New little shorts for me to wear. Do you like those? I can't remember how much they cost now. About 10 quid, something like that. Amazon, of course. Amazon. Fantastic service. <clears throat> right, back to this. I bought a bed last year. 
Um, the best bed that I laid on was in John Lewis. The mattress was, I think, two and a half thousand pounds. Let me tell you, you got on this bed, you did not want to get off. Absolutely true. Now, that's not the one I bought. I didn't buy one any close to that. Uh, the one I bought was from Bentles, cost me, I think, £800. It was in the sale. That was the whole bed. That's the bed and the... That's it, that's it. you know, £800. That was it. No more to pay. This this, this mattress on in John Lewis, I think it was about £2,500. My God, it was lovely. It was so nice. But I, I'll be honest with you... The price really put me off that, you know, you should spend money on a bed. If you go and buy a double bed for £100, don't expect to have a good night's sleep on it. You've got to save the money. You spend a third of your life in bed. You've got to spend the money on a bed. OK. Um, so I got mine. But there was one in John Lewis. And ever since I've had that, I thought, oh, maybe I should have saved up for the John. There's nothing wrong with that one. It's so comfortable. It really is. And plus, I've got a John Lewis mattress topper on top. Now, when you buy a mattress topper, be very careful. Don't buy a cheap one because the feathers will poke through and it will really piss. It will really annoy you. OK, when you turn over. Oh, what's that? And you get a little. I mean, it doesn't hurt, but it's annoying. A little little prick in your arm or something like that. It's a feather sticking through. That's what it is. The John Lewis ones, they've got a, 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 a down proof mattress topper, which has got a layer on the top and it, that's a bit thick and it stops any feathers coming through. Fantastic. But if you want to try one out, look at this. Trying out a mattress normally involves an awkward quick lie down inside the shop, watched by other shoppers. But John Lewis is about to take the experience to a whole new level. This is fantastic. The employee-owned department store chain is planning to open fully furnished apartments at major branches across the UK where shoppers can stay the night to test out the products. Now, obviously, you're not going to have your low-end mattresses on this. I'm sure you wouldn't. It would be the two and a half thousand pound jobs. And I, I would have done this if it was done at the time. I probably would have tried this out. The plans were revealed by the firm's new managing director in an interview where she lifts the lid on her career, not having children and loneliness at the top. Um, uh, it says, we're not just selling your mattress. We are selling you a perfect night's sleep. The residents, as the apartments will be known, are due to launch in Oxford Street, London, Liverpool and Cambridge this autumn, the Times has reported. Uh, the lady took over the managing director and it says about her. But what an excellent idea. What an excellent idea to do that. You know, if you've got some expensive items to shift, Jake, <laughs> Jake wants to know, did the bed come with a man for that price? I'll tell you what, Jake, if you want, I'll share one with you for the night. How's that sound? Oh, he's probably logged off now, is he? <laughs> I don't mind, Jake, if you want me to uh, pop along there with you. You know, we go to John Lewis together. Can we use this bed for the night, please? I think it's an excellent idea. I really can. Fantastic idea. When you've got like a high-end product like that. Now, take, for example, the £2,500 mattress that I laid in about a year ago at John Lewis. As I say, it was the most comfortable bed ever. But £2,500... I've got a problem letting out, letting go of that sort of money unless I'm absolutely sure. If they had had that then, I, I probably would have taken them up on that offer, stayed the night, and I, 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 I'm 99% sure the next morning I would have gone down to, I don't know how it works, perhaps someone wakes you up or you, I, I don't know how it would work, but you know, the next day uh, I would wake up, go straight to that shop, that is the best night's sleep I've ever had. There's two and a half thousand pounds. This would work. This is going to work for them. That is fantastic. Oh, yeah, but Jake, I'm not, am I not worth two and a half thousand pounds? Come on. Am I not worth it? And it's not until you lay on one of these mega, mega comfortable bed mattresses that you realise the difference between that and perhaps your one that you've got for Argos for 200 quid. The difference is quite spectacular. Do yourself a favour, right? Next time you go into John Lewis, or if you're going past one, go in. Go into John Lewis, right? Go to the bed section. 
and find, seek out that two and a half thousand pound mattress and do me a favor, go and lay on it and come back to me and tell me, all right? Let me know what you think. Jason says, treat yourself. Oh, I'm still thinking about that one, Jason. Jason's talking about something completely different. I'm still thinking about that one. Good morning to Mark Cording. Morning, Mark. I hope you're well. All right, let's do... Uh, Wayne says, I can, can't see Steve Allen leaving his listeners. No, me neither. Me neither. <laughs> oh, uh, uh, Jason has sent a link. Selfridges ice cream, 99 quid a cone. The billionaires at soft serve. £99 for a cone of ice cream in Selfridges. Oh, no, that's just ridiculous, isn't it? That is ridiculous. Okay, birthday time, gang. Let's get these birthdays done. Uh, happy birthday this morning to Stuart David Whittingham. 53 years old today. Happy birthday to you, Stuart. Loving the sunglasses on there, okay? Ian Armstrong today is 48 years old. Happy birthday, Ian. Paul Allen's birthday today. Happy birthday, Paul. Uh, Wayne, Cara Douglas, Wayne Cara Douglas. Are you Caravan Park? No, you're not Caravan Park, are you? I'm just trying to think of your, your name on there. Wayne Cara Douglas, 48 years old today. Well, you don't look that, do you, my love? Happy birthday, Wayne. Happy birthday. Jade Monroe is 24 years old today. Happy birthday, Jade. Jeff Kirby today, 60 years old today. Happy birthday, Jeff. Kirsty Bentley. Hello, Kirsty. Are you, um... Are you my uh, my friend that I work with at uh, Belushi's sister? I think you might be. Happy birthday, Kirsty. 27 years old today. And Tito Hernandez. What a wonderful shirt. I like those, like, Spanishy, Mexican... Uh, what's what's the word? Uh, Puerto Rican-sounding surnames. And uh, Hernandez. That's a great name. Portuguese-y, though. You know, those sort of surnames. Wonderful surname. Uh, Tito Hernandez is 38 years old today. If you've got any late messages, send them through very quickly and I'll read them out for you. But first of all, we need to sing happy birthday to these wonderful people. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Stuart, Ian, Paul, Wayne, Jade, Jeff, Kirsty, and Tito. Happy birthday to you. Got all the names in there. All the names in there. Look, very, very clever. All the names have got in there. All righty. Uh, finally then, Adam says, yes, Wayne's Caravan Parks. Ah, right. Okay. Excellent. I still like to buy a caravan, I think. Christina reckons if she went to John Lewis, she might she might get thrown out. Well, um, it depends what you're up to, Christina. If you behave yourself, you won't be chucked out, dear. Naughty people must be chucked out by Big Butch Dorman. My favourite Dorman of all time is Moses. He works in a little bar in Clapham that I know. We like Moses very much. Adam says, book yourself into the John Lewis flat and you are united to... Yes, excellent. I could do that. Book myself into the John Lewis flat and we could do a live show from there. But I'm not ready to change. I'm not changing the bed just after I bought that one a year ago. Maybe in a couple of years' time. That would be very nice, wouldn't it? Uh, Wayne also says, I have an £1,800 mattress because she has a bad back. I have to say, it's an amazing night's sleep. Where did you get yours from, Wayne? Was that a John Lewis one? Go on, go into John Lewis, boys and girls, and try out that two and a half thousand pound mattress, and you will start saving. Or, of course, on the 0% finance deal. That's it today. I've got a dash now, boys and girls. My mate will be coming around shortly, uh, and we're going into London uh, just for a couple of hours and have a little bit of a bit of a meal there to collect some tablets from the uh, hospital. Thank you very much for watching the show today, and I'll see you again very, very soon. Have a nice Thursday. Cheerio now. Bye-bye.